Hi Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your November 1st to the 15th, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be located in the description box below. Now, before we start this meditation, I want to apologize. I have a bit of a cold, so don't mind my voice. Now, let's dive into this meditation before we start. Clearing the negative energy, raising our positive energy, and moving us forward. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whatever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into this safe and loving space. All right, so let's let the bowl sink as we see what the tarot has to say. Sagittarius, November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020, Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020, Sagittarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angel and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Awesome. Now let's see what your chakra energy is for this time. Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Ooh, fantastic. These four. So we're starting here with creativity. This is a sacral chakra. This is where a lot of negativity from this life, from past lives is held. And there's a sense here of not only a purging of it. Well, okay. So what Spirit is saying is purge is wrong. It's not a purging. It's a deeper comprehension of pain into beauty and pain into art. And that's what's really fueling this creativity that is around you. It's almost as if you're transcending a lot of barriers that were put before you. And you're creating really something quite beautiful within your world. And that's really quite extraordinary. You know, that, re that really is. It's really quite beautiful. And it leads us to my favorite card, the I Am Presence. This is the crown chakra. This is the card that says, I am. I am what? I am strong, I am capable, I am prosperous, I am bountiful, I am enough. Or, and I know people don't like me saying the negative, but it has to be hard because which side resonates with you? I am nothing, I am worthless, I am angry, I am upset, I am defeated. I am never going to get to where I want to be in my life. Which statements, which statements resonate with you? 
Do you vacillate between both? Are you like, well, yeah, it kind of feels like that, but I really want it to be more. So what are you crowning yourself with? Crowning yourself with the knowledge that you are enough, that you are powerful, that you are prosperous, that you are beautiful, that you are transcendent. That, that is your, your greatest ally during this time. And I love visualizing and how spirit has been showing me the crown chakra is quite literally as a crown set before us. Just take it for a moment. Just sit back, see yourself at this beautiful table, you know, and you're sitting in this beautiful chair and this person lays before you with their white gloves on, this box, this velvet, beautiful box, and they open up the box and in there lies your crown. It lies the crown that shows your beauty, that shows your magnificentness, that shows your royalty and your regality for this world and the way that you move forward. And so here with the crown chakra, what does that crown look like? Is it something very ornate? Is it something rather subtle? Is it something that isn't existent, isn't in existence at all? Do you feel like you don't deserve a crown? Is the crown falling apart? Is it too old? Do you sit there and say, wow, once upon a time, I thought of myself worthy of wearing this crown, and now I just can't see it. So with the I am presence, it is I am enough. Even if I have so much more to achieve, even if I know that this journey has just begun and I'm just starting to find my footing, I am enough and I wear my crown. And so you reach your hands forward to place that crown on your head, to bless yourself, to move forward in your majesty. And it might take time to be able to reach for that crown, to be able to place it on your head. It's powerful. It is a powerful time. And there is truth there. When you can place that crown on your head, when you can move forward in your beauty, in your prosperity. Forgiveness, the heart chakra. This is forgiving others. Yes, that's important. But a lot of what the heart has to forgive is ourselves. If we have to forgive ourselves. I wasn't enough. I should have done more. This person could have liked me if only I was better. It's like, no, I forgive me for having to learn the lessons that I had to learn, for having to live the life that I had to live before I could embrace love, before I could embrace my beauty, before I could embrace my truth. And it is that forgiveness that is needed to be done before we can transcend, before we can move forward, before we can be empowered. And then we have spiritual awakening. Again, this is the crown chakra. This is the crown that we wear. This is an awakening into your beautiful, prosperous, brilliant self. This is awakening into your light, your love, and your glory. Spiritual awakening has you embracing your spiritual power, which most people in this world overlook, but which is so terribly important to us. Now, the left-hand side here is your inner self. The middle is your heart, your emotional self. The right-hand side is your public self, the public arena. So you have temperance. This is you starting off. You're crowning yourself right here. Your angels are moving you. You have balance coming in. Oh, I get chills. Four of pentacles. You have vampiric energy trying to move you away from truly embracing who, that you, are, who you are. Four of pentacles moves to the five of pentacles. Pauper's mentality. Anger. Upset. Negativity. Doubts. Fears despondencies and then the world opens up once you deal with this you open yourself to a world that you hadn't thought you could be a part of that you didn't think got to be part of your life part of your soul part of yourself it moves you to your heart the king of cups being a king of your heart ruling yourself the ace of cups you're definitely taking a healing powerful gift the Seven of Swords, taking up your knowledge and leaving some things behind and moving forward to healing, beautiful love. This moves you then to the Ace of Wands, passion, fire, determination, crowning your, your public arena, your public self. The Five of Cups, moving away, changing your mindset, changing your life, moving away from negativity. The Lovers, Gemini Energy, a time frame of May 21st to June 20th. And the Queen of Cups, you have the King and the Queen of Cups right here, 
Whenever I have the king and the queen of the same suit from the same deck in a reading, it's a soulmate connection. It's a true love connection. So this is love of the heart moving you forward. This is truly taking this profound gift and it permeating not only your emotional self, but the way that you move forward within your life, within your soul, within what you desire from your existence. Now let's see the people who will be aiding you during this time. Gemini. Gemini. Sagittarius. Which is funny. Gemini is your sister energy. And it's right here. So you do have that kind of impulsive, inquisitive Gemini energy coming forward. So that's, that's really quite beautiful. So it says Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. These three. We have here the Princess of Wands, Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Passion, Determination, Power, Truth. This is a person who looks at things differently. This is a person who has a very different idea and mindset about things. This is a person who is passionate, determined, and really helps you see inspiration. They really have a new way of looking at things. This could be somebody that you know in real life. This could also be somebody that inspires you in this way. Then we have the Prince of Wands. Again, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is somebody who's determined, moves forward astoundingly quickly. Okay, this, this energy here, because you, ha you are a fire sign energy, and fire sign energy calls to you, Sagittarius. You have this gift that's being handed just to you during this time. We don't have you qu taking it quite yet, meaning not that you won't take it, meaning that it is a choice whether you take it or whether you don't. Taking the gift of the Ace of Cups is rather given because you have both the King of Cups and the Queen of Cups here. This is more something that you are striving towards. This energy here of the Princess of Wands and then of the Prince of Wands, it really calls to you. It really calls to you because fire sign energy calls to fire sign energy. Moving forward in passion, moving forward in determination, moving forward in, you know, brilliance of self. There is something more that you are reaching for. And the way that they are going about it is really quite intriguing to you. There might be times where you need to step back just a little bit to really embrace what you want, what you desire, and move at more of your own pace. And then we have here strength, which is a Leo energy, a time frame of July 23rd to August 22nd. This is somebody who knows that strength is not through brute force strength. It's not through bullying, either verbally or physically. It is through kindness, compassion, love, and respect. And that's the strength that you're really drawn to during this time. And that's the sort of passion that you are drawn to during this time. And it can even be stories of people really claiming, seeing, and embracing their inner strength and moving past, overcoming a lot of doubts, a lot of fears, and a lot of negativity. Because you start off this whole entire reading crowned with the essence of you. You end this whole entire reading embraced by love and guided by love. So this is your angels. This is your spirit guides guiding you forward. This is your angels wrapping their wings around you. And what's beautiful about you, Sagittarius, because you are represented by the temperance card in the major arcana. You always have your angels by you. That's why you're so drawn to the spiritual. That's why you're so inquisitive. That's a huge part of who you are and where you're headed. And here you're balancing the night and the day, the shadow self and the self that we let see by the light of day. And there's a power here. There's a brilliance here. There's a force. And as this power comes over you, what you're really doing at this time, and I feel Spirit is saying, talk about these cards together, is you have this vampiric energy that makes you feel like a pauper. You have this energy that says, I am not worthy. I am drained. I am overwhelmed. I have nothing left to give. Actually, a lot of you Sagittarius, Sag Sagittarius, Sagittarians, there we go, that's it, are going to feel like you have nothing left to give. Overwhelmed, out of your element. You know, looking at what you desire and saying, how did I get here? And how did this happen? This energy needs to be perched. And looking at yourself and seeing yourself as a prosperous, powerful individual needs to be embraced. This is a game changer because what you have here is you have the essence of yourself crowning you 
and you have the the empress, a reclaiming of your throne, the reclaiming of your bounty, the reclaiming of your brilliance opening up to you. And it really is here because it always makes me think of the world because, well, of course, she's pregnant with the world. The world opens up to you in a way you hadn't realized. So here, you are not a victor. You are not a victor. No. You're going to think, I am not a victor. That's it. I was like, well, wait, that doesn't sound right. But that's wrong. It is moving that statement to I am not a victim, but a victor. I do not have to have other people drain my energy, take my happiness, deny my truth. Because you are claiming a throne that you thought was lost. You're claiming a power that you didn't think you had anymore. And you are stepping into your, your grace, your determination, your passion, your beauty, your brilliance. And there's this divine feminine energy guiding you and healing you. There's a sense here of kind of stepping back from things just a little bit and really embracing what you love, what you desire, a nurturing, a pampering of the self. And it moves you to the King of Cups. And now the King of Cups and the Queen of Cups, I just have to talk about them together because Spirit is saying there's a beautiful soulmate connection here of love. Now we always think of soulmate connections as lovers, but they don't have to be. For me, soulmates are people who resonate with our soul. There are people that our souls have met, you know, along the way. And they have this tremendous impact. Now they can be good or they can be bad. But they're having us here. Because if you can see the crowns above their head. They're having us here. Embrace our I am presence. See our crown to move forward in love. And the thing that I love about the King of Cups. Is that in the right away Smith deck. He is a king on a rock in the middle of the water. It is implied yes that he rules the kingdom. Okay because that's what kings do. But it's not seen. And what the King of Cups tells me, shows me. And what Spirit says is that we rule only one person in this life, and that is ourselves. So be the best ruler that we can be. Because even if you try to rule a child, right? They are your responsibility. You help them, you nurture them, you move them forward, everything like that. You cannot make them do what they do not want to do. I mean, unless you're, you know, unless you absolutely force them. So here, it's also looking at ourselves. We cannot make ourselves do what we do, want, do not want to do. And that is the truth. Because it's kind of like, oh, I'm going to go and exercise today. We don't. I'm going to eat. I'm not going to eat a cookie today. I do. You know, <laughs> those type of things. Like, oh, I'm going to get this amount of work done. Cuts that work a little bit short or looks at things differently. And winds up, you know, getting distracted. You know, we procrastinate. We this, we that. That's all part of who we are as human beings. And so we look at that and we're like, wow, if I can't even keep me on the straight and narrow, what makes me think that I can be in charge of others or that I rule others? They have to rule themselves. And that's a powerful thing to come to an understanding to. This is a ruling of your heart. And this is your heart saying, you rule only me. Please be present. Please be here. Because God's source spirit, however you see the divine the universe, is handing you a gift of healing, beautiful love. Is handing you a gift of soul and passion and beauty and understanding. Cleansing waters are coming over you. They're washing away doubts and fears and negativity. They're having you awaken into your power, into your beauty, into your essence, into yourself. And they're having you embrace so much more than you had realized. And the Ace of Pentacles, the Ace of Pentacles, the Ace of Cups, whenever it is given to us, is always so intense. It's always so much more than we anticipate because it clears away. It clears away so much negativity, so much anger, so much despair, so much horror. And it's like, okay, I purge this from me. And as I purge this from me, I take my knowledge. As I heal, I take my knowledge. I leave some things behind. Why? I can't take them with me. I just can't. This doesn't get to be a part of my story, of the way I define my life. And so I purge it. You leave two very profound things behind. You can leave more behind over time, most definitely. But right now, it's two things. And I keep on hitting the Ace of Cups as I'm talking. And this healing keeps on kind of coming at you more intensely, more powerfully than you had realized. It gives you your wings. It lets you fly. It lets you discover. 
And as you move forward, you embrace truth. You embrace understanding. You embrace something deeper than you had expected. And it moves you to the Two of Cups. It moves you to a healing, beautiful love. You have the minor arcana lovers. And you have the major arcana lovers here. You are moved towards a healing, towards a power, towards a grace, towards a beauty, towards an abundance. You are being healed. It can start off really small. Best things in life usually start off very small. And it grows into something so much more than you had realized. So much more than you had anticipated. And it brings you to the Ace of Wands. It brings you, Sagittarius, to a gift just for you. As you claim the essence of yourself, as you move forward as a king, as a king of your own existence, you have a gift coming in just for you. Passion, determination, fire. A embrace and a depth of self and of soul. And as you embrace this, as this permeates every single ounce, ounce of your being, you reach for it. It is going to be hard work to take it. I'm not going to lie to you. But it is a powerful taking when you do grasp this. When you move forward in this divine gift that is meant for you. And it changes your mind. It changes your whole entire life. You don't look at things the same way anymore. Change your mind and change your life. Look at the two of cups that stand. Look at the healing, beautiful love that is a part of you. Embrace that grace. Move forward in that truth. Because as you change your mind, you have five going into six. You embrace your love, your passion, your brilliance. You embrace your heart. And you embrace. Spirit is saying, a love like you've never seen before. It's something sacred to you. And what I love about this is Sagittarius, you're represented by the bow and hour. You know, that's your, that's your sign. And so you have the essence of you coming through. And your sister sign right here in the stack has you tattooed on their arm. It's like you're right there. You're part of that energy that flows through their body. You're right there. And there's power in that. There's brilliance. There's beauty. There's truth. So you are embracing something that you love more than you understand. You are embracing a duality. You're embracing a complexity. You're embracing also a bit of an impetuousness during this time that is really quite stunning. And it brings, it brings you to your soulmate. And we can see that right here. That soulmate of love. That soulmate of love. That soulmate of beauty. That sense of this is where you're supposed to be. Holding up your hands. Receiving that energy. Letting it course through your body. Understanding that at this moment, in the, in the road of your existence, there's more here than you realize. And the crowns are hovering above your head. The beauty. The understanding. The passion. The brilliance. It's more then maybe at times you're ready for. But it's no less than you, than you deserve. And divinity is gracing you, healing you, empowering you. So let's go deeper. Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020, Sagittarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Oh my gosh, and look at this right here. You heal and this love comes. There's a powerful, profound, and brilliant love here. Soulmate connection, just, it rocks your socks. It, it, just, it just absolutely is transcendent. And it can be falling in love with your inner self, falling in love with the way that you're moving forward on this earth, finding your path, finding your voice, finding your power. This is what you're moving towards. And you're claiming possibilities. You're claiming this creative energy that you thought was lost to you because of negativity, because of a pauper's mentality, because there is somebody who has spoken negativity over you in your life that said you will never get there. And now you're proving them wrong. And it could have been somebody, it really could have been, Somebody who had either great impact on you in your formative years when you were a child or an ex-lover who 
who said something cruel and you just were devastated by it and their cruelness has been perpetuated and now you're breaking that cycle and you're calling forward love that lasts, that grounds, that really does embrace the very essence of you. Sagittarius, November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. And one bonus card. Fantastic. And then let's see the people you have to be mindful of during this time. Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. Who does Sagittarius have to be mindful of? November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. Who does Sagittarius have to be mindful of? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Fantastic, these three. So we start here with chariot energy. This is Cancer energy, a time frame, June 21st to July 22nd. This is somebody who lets their emotions really rule them and get the better of them. So you just need to be mindful of this person because they will suck you in. They will suck you in. And the people who aid you, they're really going to have the same kind of resonant energy as you. They have that fire sign energy to you. This is somebody who's just going to drown you in their emotions. So just be mindful of that. Then you have the Queen of Cups. So you have a very positive Queen of Cups here. You have a very negative Queen of Cups. This can be that Cancer energy right here because Cancer is represented by the Cups in the Minor Arcana. And this is, again, somebody who is too much, too much of a llama drama. Like, really seriously, trauma drama, they're, they're just too much. They will blow everything out of proportion and they'll really run with it during this time. They're not grounding themselves the way that they need to. And then we have Justice. This is Libra energy, time frame September 23rd to November, no, September 23rd to October, there we go, 22nd. And this is somebody who is too letter of the law. There, there's no gray area. There's no heart here. And you, you can't do that. You, you can't walk down the road, or let's say you can, most definitely, because everything is up to free will. You don't feel comfortable during this time being so exclusionary, Okay. There is a sense here that you really rule more with your heart than you do with, with your head during this time. And it's not a bad thing. You, know, you can be astoundingly logical, but you really are going to be driven forward by, by emotional truth. And this cuts through the fear, and this really does empower you. So we have the Ace of Voice. God's source spirit is handing you a gift. You have a very positive chariot energy here and a negative one, so be mindful. Four of emotions, again, God is handing you a gift right here, that it's going to be a little bit difficult to see. Three of Pentacles. Again, the Empress comes forward and the Knight of Pentacles. The Queen of Emotions crowns you here, roots you in the main part of your reading. Strength. Six of Voice. Moving forward. And then we have here the Muse of materials, the king of pentacles. Okay. So you're starting off this time with God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing you a gift of knowledge. This is for you. And it is against the vampiric energy. You're slicing through that vampiric energy. And the way I like to see, and I like to visualize, really handling vampiric energy that pulls us back, that, you know, denies us, is to just visualize yourself sitting for a moment. And it's really quite the imagery of this card. So it's really, really cool. So you're sitting quietly, center yourself. Your angels are behind you. Their wings wrap around you. You take the sword that is being given to you in your hands. You hold it. You hold the sword, right? And you cut through the golden light that is around you, the golden light of the universe. And as you cut through that golden light, as your angels help you cut through that golden light, you cut through the light of creation. And you might sit there and be like, oh, whoa, I don't want to do that. But you embrace the silence. 
You do. You embrace the silence. You embrace the calm. You embrace the peace. And you sit for a little bit, just in that silence, a few moments, a few inhales of breath. And the light comes back. It's stronger. It's more than it was before because you have purged away the sewer sludge energy that is around you. And knowledge now guides you. Wisdom is now a part of you. Little bit by little bit, it moves you to the chariot. It moves you to moving forward in strength and determination and focus as you leave behind a poor person mentality, as you leave behind a sense of, I don't deserve wealth, because now you do. And you move forward in such fierceness that people are shocked. You have such an emotional connection during this time. And then God's source spirit, however you see the divine the universe, again, hands you a gift. You're not going to be looking for it. It really is going to be something that helps you reclaim your voice, reclaim your power. It embraces what you love, what you desire. And it moves you then, then to prosperity that you have been working towards, to this light shining on you. Success, bounty, brilliance, joy. You are a king. You are accepting a gift. This is what you've been waiting for. And it opens you. It opens you to claiming a throne you thought was lost. It opens you to claiming your voice that you thought was extinguished. And you move forward. You move forward towards something more. So this love has you empowering you, has you moving forward in a strength of kindness and compassion that the world overlooks at times, but is so desperately needed. And you move forward. You move forward in ferocity. You move forward in determination. You move forward slowly and steadily with the Knight of Pentacles towards what is most valuable to you. And that is the healing essence of love. That is the soulmate connection. That is this entanglement of love. I've never seen a reading, you know, so embedded in love, so embedded in your emotional and spiritual truth that it is moving you forward in a path that might seem just completely <laughs> alien at times, but it's also completely right. And then you embrace the queen of emotions, the queen of cups. This is that healing, beautiful love coming in. And one of my teachers once taught me that it is the empress is the only queen that is close to being like the empress in such love and such purity of self is the queen of cups. And you have her here showing up in both decks. Actually, you have her showing up in all three. And actually, I, I spirit is saying, you know what, the queen of cups is not being mindful of another person. It's being mindful of the power of emotion that overflows you. So just be mindful of that. It can lead you to either, either letting your emotions get the best of you and running wild like a chariot, or it can lead you to becoming too logical and too stringent because this is overwhelming. So be mindful of that because that is really what Spirit is saying here. And you are embracing a love, a power, a brilliance that shapes the universe, that shapes your universe. It moves you forward in tremendous strength as you embrace your love, as you embrace the soulmate connection. Strength that others don't really understand. Strength that grounds you and evolves you and embraces you and it has you taking up your knowledge and your understanding as you embrace your heart, the queen of cups, as you take in the energy of healing from this world and you move forward to the unknown, to something exquisite, to something so much more than you had anticipated. Are the waters going to be rocky? Does, do emotions run high? Most definitely. But it moves you to a place of power, to a place where you face those uncertainties and embrace truth. And it leads you to prosperity. It leads you to seeing an interconnectedness. It leads you to seeing a truth, to seeing so much more wealth, prosperity, and abundance than you had realized. And now let's see what your spirit guide, your spirit animal cards are for this time. Sagittarius, November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. November 1st to the 15th, 2020 Sagittarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides.
We have the lizard's, lizard spirit. Dream the world into being. It is time to take our dreams and make them into realities, to move forward in their passion, in their brilliance, in their power. Do not be afraid to dream your world into being, to take your dreams and make what is part of your subconscious, part of your conscious, and then part of your world. Then we have the rabbit spirit. Now is a lucky time. It is. Now is a lucky time for you. Seize this energy that is around you. Seize this love. Seize this beauty. Seize this, this grace. And it moves you to the hummingbird spirit. Be here now. Not stuck in the past. Not always dreaming about the future. Be in the present now. And embrace a grace yeah, that most people ignore. Embrace a power of presence that people will most definitely take note of. Because you're being in the here now. You're being empowered by the very essence of you. Your subconscious spirit animal message is the wolf spirit. Turn knowledge into wisdom. It has been well fought for knowledge that is becoming the wisdom for which you live by. It guides you then to the subconscious chakra message, which is grounding earth star chakra, right? located six inches below your feet. This is your roots. This is you grounding yourself, you rooting yourself into your passion, into your brilliance, into what you desire, what you want, what you need. This is also making sure that the soil, what you're planting yourself in, the energy that is around you, the people that are around you, the power that is around you is feeding you and not depriving you of the, nurt the nutrients you need to grow. Your subconscious people message is the king of pentacles, just like right here. So it comes out in the deeper part of your meaning, your reading, and it comes out here. There is a way that you are seeing the connections of things. There is a way that you are embracing passion and power and determination and stubbornness. And it's really serving you well. There's a fierceness to you with all the love that's going on and all the nourishing of soul. You might not think that there is a fierceness to you, but there most definitely is. Oh, goodness, that's wrong. Here, and your subconscious chakra message, not chakra, tarot message, is the Four of Swords. Give honor to the battles that you have been through, through the hardships, the pains, and the disappointments. And know that this is a battle. Life is a battle. And yours has been well fought. And as you give honor, and as you embrace your grace, and you say, I have done a good job. Yes, we could always do better, better but hindsight is twenty twenty. And then moves you to your deeper subconscious tarot message, which is the Knight of Wands, which is you moving forward in passion and determination and fire, and focus, and blazing a trail for yourself that at times you had hardly imagined you could, you could blaze, that you could move forward this way. All right, Sagittarius, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all, and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we move forward in the power and the passion and the brilliance that is our heart, that is our soul, that moves us and transcends us, transcends us as we forgive the past, as we embrace the present, because we are forging our futures through the actions of today. So take a nice deep breath in, Exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Sagittarius. <laughs>